The dog I got for Christmas when I was eight. Her Majesty the Queen. And the Longhorn Network. All things that are dead. This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12. Your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What a joke. I'm Drake Toll. From ESPN Central Texas, thank you for making Locked On Big 12 your first listen every single day. Today's show, Longhorn Network is no more. Is Utah going to run the Big 12? And BYU and Utah, a complicated rivalry. Uh, Longhorn Network is one of the worst ideas of all time. Had you brought the Longhorn Network to the Shark Tank, they would have uh, all said no, including Mark Cuban, a Texas guy. Um, I, I, get, I get it, I guess, to an extent, right? They were, the University of Texas is like, oh, we're the University of Texas. We're going to have our own network. The whole, the, the Longhorn Network effectively saved the Big 12 in a weird way because it was like Texas wanted the Longhorn Network. They could do it in the Big 12. They didn't want to deal with the whole Pac 12 thing. And then, like, the, this is, has been colossal. What a terrible, terrible failure. No, no one watched it. No one watched it. You know what is nuts to me? In the first five years the long, of the Longhorn Network, it lost 48 million dollars i can't even count that high 48 million dollars what is maybe wilder is that texas was given 300 million dollars for 20 years of it and now going to the sec uh, chris del conte he said it in like may you know 2022 maybe or he was like oh yeah yeah i guess the longhorn network has to go away but now it's picking up more traction. People are talking about it more. And I wanted to address it because I think it's very fun to prey on Texas's downfall. And if you're a Texas fan that's listening, you're like, oh, I hate this guy. Oh, locked on Big 12. What a joke. You're not going to be here next year. I mean, OK. Yeah, I get more viewership than the Longhorn Network. I'm, I'm all right. We're good. We're good. And I don't hate Texas fans. I don't hate Texas. But you left the conference. I don't have to. I'm living in an apartment with my ex. At least you're paying rent. Thank you for the paycheck. I don't have to like you. Why should I? Why should I like Texas? God bless, man. You know what's happening today? Listen to this. You'll get a kick out of this, folks. I was looking uh, this afternoon, the Texas, um, the, the Longhorn Network, what they're running today. And Monday, August 21st, that was yesterday. I'll show you what they were running yesterday. Monday, August 21st, 6 a.m. College football, Texas against UTSA. 9 a.m., Giant Killers, story of, the lady, story of the Lady Longhorns. Spring football game at 10 a.m. I bet that's run 17 billion times. How about Texas game day at noon yesterday? 1 p.m., this is where it really gets good. This is where, this is where I hone in. It's great. Who's watching any of this? 1 p.m., NCAA Women's College Volleyball, Texas A&M, Corpus Christi versus Texas. Yes! 3 p.m. NCAA Women's College Soccer, Rice versus Texas. And I, I get it. You're like, oh, why is he laughing? Why does he think that's so funny? Because we'll come back to that. 5 o'clock, Texas Football Press Conference. I'll give it to you. 5.30? I love it. I love it. How do you follow up the Steve Sarkeesian Press Conference on the Texas Longhorn Network? The 2023 Fashion Show, Capstone Collection. <laughs> I can't. Then at 6 p.m., LBJ presents Admiral William McRaven. What are we doing? What are we doing? Then at 7 o'clock, NCAA college football, right around dinner time, Texas hosts the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks. Great. And then at 10 p.m., NCAA women's college soccer, Rice versus Texas. The same thing you saw at 3 p.m. You get it again at 10 p.m. I just, I knew it was bad. I knew it was bad, but I couldn't have imagined it would be, I don't know why I'm reacting so emotionally, but I couldn't have imagined it would be that bad. That That's the programming. I like, I'll give you the coaches show. I'll give it to you. But then you followed it up with fashion show, the capstone collection what are we doing? There's a God and he's got a sense of humor. There is a God and he has a sense of humor. This thing is terrible. No one's watching it and it hasn't been good for so long. You know what happened? The investors sat in the room and they said, Texas has been good. National championship appearances, 
two of them from what oh four oh four oh five to oh nine. You know, you have like a five year span where Texas goes to the championship twice. And I said, we can do this. We can market this. It's a huge brand. You know, there are a lot of famous people tied to the UT, the UT. Ugh. We could give them their own their own network. It will take off, right? Come on, guys, right? Everybody. And they said, sure, yeah, whatever. Uh, it did not. <clears throat> it did not. And now Texas is, I guess, not paying for it, right? Did it ever really um, hurt the Longhorns? I don't know, right? Don't blame you for saying yes to this. ESPN paid you a ton of money. Somebody lost money on this. It wasn't University of Texas. But now it going away. I don't even think, let's be honest about this. I don't think Texas fans watch Longhorn Network. I think they got to the point now where like, oh, Longhorn Network's gone? Oh, I didn't know it was still on TV. I got tired of watching Texas versus Louisiana Monroe. It is baffling. I mean, baffling how bad it is. And I have no remorse for the Longhorn Network dying. It lost, again, $48 million in its first five years. That's bad. Terrible, terrible product. Nobody cared. It did not ever pick up a brand nationally. I don't know if there is a school you could do like a like a Irish fighting Irish network. I don't think that would work. I don't think anything out of I don't think anything out of college football would be uh, locked on Bulldogs. Great podcast. You know, we do like a half hour a day. A whole network? No, sir. No, sir. We prove that that does not work in college athletics. Thank you, Texas Longhorns. Thank you, ESPN. Thank you, the stupidity. I thought that Texas was going to hang around a while in college football. It didn't. It didn't. So, see you later. Hey, the rest of this show is a Locked On podcast crossover edition with TJ. My man, uh, TJ, he is the host of my man, JT. Oh, geez, here I am. I was guess it got emotional. My man, JT, he is the host of Locked On Utes. We talk, is Utah going to be, are uh, they going to run the Big 12? BYU and Utah. They're, it's a complicated matchup. All that and more right here on Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It is your team, and it's every day. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. We've all been through times where life felt uncertain or you felt about uncertain about where life was going. Sometimes we're faced with tough decisions. The path forward is not always clear whether you're dealing with decisions around a career, relationship, or anything else. BetterHelp is here. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Whether or not you've been to therapy personally, I could still recommend BetterHelp. It's somewhere that anyone can go to get better help with mental health. If you're thinking of starting a therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible, suitable to your schedule. Fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on college today to get 10% off your first month. Betterhelp.com slash locked on college. That is better. E H E L P.com slash locked on college. Drake, when talking about Utah in the Big 12, can they win it in 2024? I, I think they can. It's going to be difficult, as we're going to talk about in a second. But I do think there's a chance that they can win this conference just because of the level that Utah football has been playing at the last few seasons. And they're going to lose a lot after this year. <laughs> and we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, they're going to have a lot of guys coming back. And just the identity and the style they play. You know, defense wins championships, run the ball, control the clock. Utah's always going to be really good at this thing. So while there's questions about how the quarterbacks are going to be next year as well, I do think if Utah is strong in the trenches and I expect them to be again and they run the football, I do think that there is a chance that Utah could win the Big 12 in 2024. You know, no Dalton Kincaid this season. No Mr. Pick 6 and Clark Phillips. It really, Utah's trajectory into the Big 12, to me, depends on how well this team can play in 2023. Can Utah show in the last year of the Pac-12, we are a caliber unit that can win the conference? To me, they're my pick. A lot of, a lot of Washington is smoke and mirrors. I think Utah has it set up with Cam Rising, if he can stay healthy, to, to win the Pac-12. Here's the problem, and here's the reason Utah will not win, will not win the Big 12 in 2024. Now, I want to preface this. Somebody out there is screaming at the TV or screaming at their phones, like, oh, yes, they can. Kansas can win the Big 12 in 20. Any, any team yes. can, mm -hmm. quote, can win the Big 12. Somebody's got to do it. The reason why Utah will not do it is inconsistency under Kyle Whittingham. And again, somebody is screaming at their phone and their TV. Look, 
all 16 teams can have me on. I can't say that all of them can win the can win the Big 12. Look at this. A loss to Oregon State. A loss to San Diego State. A loss to BYU a couple years ago. Then last season, you drop a game to UCLA, Oregon, Penn State, Florida. Those are better teams, but still, where, where's my big one? Kyle, where's my big one? Where's my, where's my, you, you can't come no to USC big... last year. That's this. That's not a big one. Uh, you want Lincoln, you can take Lincoln Riley. You're one USC. That's fine. I got to watch Lincoln Riley get his ass handed to him a couple of times in Waco uh, against Baylor teams that weren't that good. So when I look at Utah, I, I ask you, I ask you, can your four losses win the big 12? Can your four losses? And I, I, I think no. And here's also this too. take it guys. Take it with a grain of salt. Take it with a grain of salt because I, I don't hate Utah. I really don't. I, I think I've said that on a show before, but I don't. <laughs> I do think Texas Tech's going to own this league for years to come. I think oh. Kansas State is really good. I believe that there are a couple of these new teams. I, maybe Colorado under Deion Sanders can have a turnaround. Utah to me is it, and, and here you go. I'm not blowing hot air up your skirt. I'm telling you how it is. Utah to me is a upper half, obviously, Big 12 team in 2024. Can they compete? with Texas Tech and Kansas State and TCU, who just went to the national championship game, I'm not going to say yes yet. I'm not going to say they can win this league yet. I need to see it before I can before I can blow that hot air up your skirt. I, oh, first of all, I like that you came in hot right there. I, I do. I personally I got fired up. I'm I sorry. Like I, like I got to take you it. Know, you started out so well. You want us all over. You're like, you know, Golden Clark Phillips, Dalton Kincaid. Like, I like Utah. They're my pick to win. And then you totally swept the rug out from under all these. And then they're not my pick to win the Big 12 in 2024. The I'll way. give you the Pac-12 this year, but not the Big 12 yeah. next year. <laughs> uh, like I said, I, I disagree with a few of the things, but I'd rather focus on the, the Big 12 persona, especially. Um, okay. I do. The biggest reason I think that. Can Utah win the Big 12 24? Yeah. Yes, they can, but it's going to be really tough because I just don't know. We haven't seen – look, Utah, they've won a lot. I mean, when you look at their last three full seasons, they've won 31 games. That would yeah. be the most of any Big 12 team in that span. And when I say full seasons, I take mm-hmm. out the COVID year. But I will add with an asterisk, had the COVID year been in place – and yeah, Cam got hurt against USC, so that's another thing where it's like, well, maybe they would have been better if they had Cam again – uh, I don't think Utah was set up for as much of a successful year that year. Jake Bentley really yeah. struggled. So there's some other things as well. Um, I, I can get behind some of the things that you brought up, but it's just hard when you're going to lose this Utah team could lose their top two running backs. Their quarter, yeah. They will use their quarterback. Yep. They're going to lose their best, not one, but two pass catchers. And then defensively as well, you're going to lose one linebacker, p- potentially two to three defensive linemen. That are really good. Wait, wait, wait. Are you hearing what you're yeah. saying right now? Yeah. Are you hearing what you're explaining to me? And then you disagree with me and say that Utah can. And I'm saying they can't. I was I'm, I was trying to be devil's advocate, play both just sides. They you, you just jumped in right away and went with the negative side. So I would love to hear for you how, since I drove in the negative there, how do you? What would be Utah's path to winning the Big 12 this year? Utah's path yes. to winning the Big 12 in 2024 yes. is cannibalism. It's cannibalism. It's the Donner party. It's what it is, is the team that wins the league goes nine and three. Mm -hmm. Utah is, has not proven under Kyle Whittingham. Hey, we can go undefeated. Uh, And Mm -hmm. and look, that's a tough thing to do. It's a terribly tough thing to do. So that's no slight on Whittingham. I don't know if any of those big 12 teams have proven that recently either. That are bingo. Bingo. And that's what's going to help Utah is this is a league of cannibals. A nine and three team can win the conference. A 10 and two team can win the conference. If Utah can play with consistency, if Utah can get over the hump, because you look at what has killed some of these, some of these recent big 12 champions is a kind of a rogue loss, like a a Baylor loss in the regular season to Oklahoma state and then came back and won it. Uh, You got a TCU team that obviously their season what they got their first their first loss in the Big 12 championship game against Kansas State but at, at 12 you know that Baylor team's a 12 win team give me a Utah team that can that can go 9 and 3 10 and 2 in a year where everybody else in the Big 12 goes 9 and 3 10 and 2 there's your shot at a Big 12 championship and i believe here here's where you get a great advantage Utah knows what it's like to play in a conference title game if you've got a 9 and 3 Oklahoma State against 10 and 2 Utah in the Big 12 championship game Give me the Utah Utes because they've been in conference championship games. They've won conference championship games under Whittingham. So if you get up to the doorstep, if you get right there, I've got a lot of confidence in Utah. It's just a matter of being one of the lucky teams who are 9-3, and 10-2 and two, that are able to, to wiggle their way into that mix the way the algorithm, the ratio, whatever it is, falls. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point. And uh, the one thing that's really we are in uncharted territory for this coming college in 24 and just in general is all these teams relocating conferences. We haven't seen like, how are these teams going to do in New Year's playing in new yeah. environments, uh, new against new teams, new recruiting landscapes? How is all that going to change everything? I think that's going to be really interesting to watch overall, just because I have a little bit more time before I want to squeeze an ad read in. I will say to a couple of the points you made against Utah, the 21 <laughs> season, I get what you're saying with the San Diego State and BYU game. I will say Cam Rice came in well didn't play against BYU and that was Charlie Brewer and I know you're I, I know yeah. Brewer was your guy and did some cool things but uh this not my guy. Was not, not, my not my guy not your guy <laughs> not my guy not your guy it wasn't your guy either <laughs> he was de- oh he's definitely not my guy I thought maybe no. just because a little bit of the success you guys had you might, you might like to claim him a little bit more but apparently not um but yeah we really struck Utah that was not the best version of that team that year because they hadn't had Cam in there yet San Diego State he came in at half because Brewer was struggling so much and then mounted a comeback but you do have a really good point about the road losses last year the ones against UCLA and Oregon I know Cam was dinged up a little bit, but still not. But I mean, he's worth showing as a quarterback. Just a general was a tough look. And uh, you should find a way to win that week one Florida game overall. I think if Utah would go back, they really wish they could have too. So yes. I think a lot of good points and yes. fair points you made about why Utah could str- could may not struggle, but still well, not I, go I, to the Big 12 championship. Yeah, what JT, there's, there's a lot of coulda, woulda, shoulda in there. And, yes. I, and I get it, right? Everybody <laughs> is, oh, we were on the cusp. Oh, we were right there. And look at a Baylor team that was six and seven last year, who I liken to a Utah or a BYU. There's, there, to me, there's a pot of teams, five or six, that had recent success in their conferences from the Pac-12 or the Big 12 who remind me of each other. And, you know, there are a lot of fan bases who said, oh, we could have won that. Oh, we were close to winning that. And I, I, I agree. I 100% agree. But I also, again, again, still lost the games. Yes. And you're right. And you're right. And that's what will be interesting to see if they can do it against a slew of new opponents come in 2024. And uh, one thing that's going to hinge on Utah's success in 2024 is just the state of the program in general. Because as we mentioned, they're going to be losing a lot of talent. So that is what we're going to be talking about in one second. All righty, Drake, coming back into this one. Uh, when talk about where does Utah football rank in the new Big 12? Yeah. Um, I, I think based on if you're like I mentioned, if you're looking at some of the recent success overall, just what they've achieved, Pac-12 champs, back to back years, and they'll be the ones coming into this as well who just have that success of I mentioned three years. They've won 31 games. That would be the most of any team in that span. Um, in 23, they were the highest ranked recruiting class over Big 12 members overall. DCU was second, uh, right by, TCU was right behind them. Utah was at 20th. They were at 21 overall in 2023 recruiting class for members that are going to be in the conference in 2024. Obviously, the Oklahoma and Texas, they were higher. Uh, there's no saying that. Well, but, um, JT, oh, I, and I don't mean to hijack, I'm not okay. going to hijack your show here. Got? Is that 24-7? Where'd you find that? I did go to 24-7. Do you not, we don't use 24-7 in the Big 12? We absolutely use 24-7 in the Big 12. And last update on August 21st, my 24-7 is showing BYU, Utah behind teams like Kansas State, UCF, Baylor, Texas Tech, TCU. For the 23 or 24? 23. Oh. Okay. We have different 24 sevens here. Yeah, I don't <laughs> you know what? We're going to err on the side of yours. <laughs> hey, it's my, it's my show. So I like that. There you go. <laughs> but either way, I think this Utah yeah. team is recruiting at a high level. They've won a lot overall. Yeah. So I agree with you. I think they have to be towards the top. If you're talking about recent success mm-hmm. of the teams that are going to be there, I think I can make an argument for them to be number one overall, but I do think it's fair to, as you mentioned, taking the totality and the history. And this is a Utah football program that is going to be going through a change overall. But I do believe, I genuinely think they belong in the top five overall. What would you say to that? Yeah, I, I here's this. I would say from a recruiting standpoint for Utah, and I meant that in jest, talking about 24-7, yeah. they they what I use is Brett Cianci at Pick Six Previews. His magazine is That's spectacular. Good Very good job. He has U- he has Utah at 21 in his picks right now uh, and uh, number 26 team in the last five years in recruiting. And that is huge. That is huge. Recruiting is going to be big in this conference. I am a little leery of, B- uh, of Utah's recruiting in 2024. That's mm-hmm. where I look and say, oh, whoa, what are we doing here? But also UCF is the number one team in the Big 12 in 24, according to 24-7. So mm-hmm. I, right, I, I think things are going to shake out yes. in a really weird way. Utah still has not put together even half of its class and you hold out for transfers as well. Uh, you it, Look, here's your clip. You'd be an idiot to think Utah's not a top five team in the Big 12 in 2024. You'd be an absolute idiot. And there are going to be some idiots who put Utah at six or seven or eight in the preseason rankings that year in that 16-team league. Hell, I might be one of those idiots when the time comes. But as it sits right now, body of work, you're getting the best Pac-12 team in football into the Big 12. Do I think they win it in year one? I don't know. Not for me to say yes, but I do know they're a top five team. The only thing 
the biggest thing that's sliding Utah right now is a portion. I, I want to give you a lot of credit, a small portion, but a vocal portion of the fan base has been atrocious. <laughs> there have been so many, ro- I'm going to call them rogue Utah fans that like have said, it. oh, we hate the Big 12. And we, we yes. you know, they've been fighting it for a year. We would never want to be in the Big 12. And what I want to do, if you go back to a show that you recorded, could Utah go to the Big 12 and you scroll through the comments, guaranteed almost everyone says, I would hate to be in the Big 12. The Pac-12 is the best place to be. <laughs> Utah was riding the ship down. We had the Big 12 had a lifeboat. Utah was riding the Titanic down and refusing, refusing the lifeboat. And then once Utah got in the lifeboat, they started spitting in the faces of the other members in the lifeboat. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't. But I think the regular, the normal Utah fans happen to have you. The five of you that just are the <laughs> worst, you can stay in the Pac-12. You can die with George Klyovkov. It's fine by me. The loudest sometimes could just make it seem like there's more than there are. Uh, to the your silent point. majority is good, and I like yes. a lot of Utah fans. Yes. I like a lot of Utah fans. Yes. They're great on Twitter mm-hmm. as well. But man, the sucky ones yeah, suck. <laughs> Uh, I have, I, I could definitely get behind that. And uh, I think another thing as well, because I, for a while, I got a lot of flack for saying I wanted Utah to stay in the Pac-12, but that was simply because... That was you? Yeah. You were one of them? I was one of them. God bless, <laughs> man. Let me, let me finish. <laughs> I had said I knew what it would do to the Pac-12 if we left. And I did not. I don't like the position that Oregon State yeah. and Washington State are in right now. Yeah. And I just, I, I'm a traditionalist. I like the, th- the way good. things were in college right. football. I enjoy that, like just playing Baylor, as we're going to talk about in our next segment. Like that was a this special kind of preseason early thing. I think that was going to be a lot of fun overall. Like yeah. I said, my thing was I just didn't love what it was going to do overall to the Pac-12. And uh, we're seeing that play out now with some of these schools and a lot of limbo overall and uh, just the state mm-hmm. of college football in general. But it is going to be exciting that uh, Utah gets there as well. You mentioned, and we both think Utah belongs in the top five. I when you're talking so. about the other teams that belong up there, I think you do obviously put TCU there based on what they've done too. And I'm yep. very curious to see what kind of t- season TCU is going to add. It seems like some people have overrated and a lot of people have underrated them, just expecting that regression because of some of the talent they've lost. You mentioned Texas Tech is set up for a lot of success. I do like that team coming into this year, especially with the quarterback they have over there as well. And Kansas State, what they've been able to build yes. to. And I would even I'd throw Baylor in. I think that yep. plus Utah would be kind of my yep. five for the top five programs. Any other ones you would swap in? It's not bad. I do think. Oh, here it comes. Oh, no. I'm worried about what you're going to say. I do think the Cougars. <laughs> I do think not the Cougars of Houston, but the Cougars of BYU. We'll make a case. They will make a case. Yes, I got that. As long as you didn't say above. Above, we would have closed the episode. No. I, I think Kalani Sataki pulls it together. And they're a good... I am just excited to have Utah and BYU. Look, let's, let's be very clear here. Everybody, everybody, let's all gather in real, real close. Utah has dominated BYU in history. Has dominated BYU in the history of this series. Well, let's get even closer. Utah has dominated BYU in the last decade. The last 10 years have not been close. Utah owns this rivalry. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you can't put you can't put BYU above Utah when you look at the head to head in the last decade or so. So I want to put that out there. But I I do think BYU can make a case Mm -hmm. to be good to be good in the Big 12. Well, and first of all, I absolutely agree with that. I think there's definitely a world they can get boosted overall. And one thing we can talk about as well is Drake. I'm just excited that this rivalry, I think, is going to get more Bingo. attention than it's always Bingo. deserved. It gets, everyone in Utah always gets excited, right? Like I'm newer to the 100%. rivalry um, since going to Utah. There's only been yeah. a couple of rivalry games that I've been able to experience as part of. So I but the hype here has always been good. But the national hype, like ESPN just never like ESPN would broadcast it. They didn't really care. Uh, like it wasn't yeah. that big of a deal. And look, once it, if it goes into rivalry week, it will get swept up a little bit in the Auburn on um, the Iron Bowl, of course, the game, Ohio State, Michigan, some of those. But I do think it's going to get a lot more attention. I think, especially because some of these cl- finishes have been a lot of fun. You had a couple years ago with uh, Jason Shelley, a high school uh, Texas high school football legend as well, yep. uh, led a crazy comeback against the Cougars. Like if that's in rivalry weekend, I think that gets a little bit more hype nationally right. versus it seems like only people in Utah know about that. So I think this rivalry in general is general is going to be a great boost for the big 12's brand too 100 percent. this is this is one of the top 10 top 15 rivalries in college football i really believe that and it is the the premier rivalry in the big 12 if not sorry god the only rivalry in the big 12 and i know i know what you're thinking oh there's baylor tcu and there's farmageddon and arizona arizona state nope let me be very clear Nobody cares. Nationally, <laughs> nobody cares. When you ask somebody, name a top 15 rivalries in college football, none of those come up. 
kicked to the Sunflower Showdown? <laughs> That's a terrible name for a rivalry. I didn't know that was the name of the rivalry. To Kansas, Kansas State it is terrible. Um, this is the only rivalry in the Big 12 right now that, it, that gets national recognition. The others, maybe they hate each other, but at the end of the day, nobody really cares. Yeah, and I compare the ones you were talking about to what the Pac-12 tried to make Utah and Colorado into for so long, which was never a rivalry. It's a joke, it's never it uh, between joke. the fan bases overall. And it's just going to be fascinating to see how th- this whole situation works out with Utah to the Big 12, the four corner schools, all the other additions to the Big 12 and in general. I am, now that we are officially on to this chapter, it's something I'm really excited about, all these new opponents and everything that it's going to lead to. Um, as the host of Locked On Big 12, I am curious, what is your thoughts on everything? So... <sighs> Look at this. I, I'm i going to say it. BYU fans have made us all think that BYU is the biggest brand in the state of Utah. Uh-huh. And the reason BYU is the bigger brand nationally is because Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, yeah. they are the Army Navy of religious schools. When That's- BYU plays in Houston, they pack out the stadium because they send so many missionaries across the country. And it's not like that's not in jest either. I I, there, I have an affinity for 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 schools that have history, a commitment to faith. I mean, that that's great. I went to Baylor. So mm-hmm. you've got a massive fan base and the fa- you are the flagship school, the fastest growing religion in the world. So you get the brand from that. OK, mm-hmm. football wise, let me rattle off something. Utah. Top 25 at all time win percentage. Top 25 in wins in the last 100 years, last 50 years, last 25 years, last 10 years. Win percentage last five years are number 13 in the country. Top 15 team in game grades over the last 10 years. That kind of gives you a metric on consistency dating back to 2013. All of that, JT, boils down to the word good. (laughs) That's the dominant football program in the state of Utah. So Mm -hmm. BYU can claim the brand. Utah's got the Utah has a a historic football program that we overlook because BYU screams in your face. I love BYU fans. I like the silent majority of Utah fans. (laughs) I really have I have an appreciation for both. But let's be clear with what that rivalry is, what it brings to the Big 12, and what Utah is. Utah is the football powerhouse. Look at the all time was like 62 to 35 against BYU. Look at that. And know that Utah is going to be just fine in the Big 12. Drake, I'm very curious how Utah fans are going to react to this episode because if if by some miracle they made it to the end of the first segment in which you were poo-pooing Utah, mm-hmm. I hope they made it through your first part of that, which you were taking mm-hmm. down Utah, and then proceeded to profusely praise them after talking about BYU. So I'm hoping they made it through because I, I think they'll I think the majority of them will like you, but Drink, I, I can't lie to you. You might still get a couple of those fans coming at you after something. They're gonna love me and yeah. they're gonna hate me. But no matter what, they watched. That's all I need. That's true. That is absolutely true. Drake, we greatly appreciate you joining us. And if people are excited about the Big 12 and want to learn more about these teams in 2023, of course, where should they head over and listen to? Well, you can block me at Drake okay. Seatoll, uh, or you can follow me at LO Big 12. A lot of content at LO Big 12 or on the Locked On Big 12 podcast, wherever you get your podcast or on YouTube as well. Go find us on YouTube. It's usually a lot of engaging guests such as yourself, JT. A lot of fun stuff going on over there. Drake, it was great joint having you on. Thank you for joining us. Uh, absolutely, JT, anytime. All righty, that's going to do it for today's edition of Lockdown News. We'll be back tomorrow talking season predictions and diving into more things Utah football related.